This is the Change the Map podcast, where we inspire, educate, and resource you to transform the Buddhist world through prayer and action. Join us as we explore the mystical world of Buddhism, discover its unique challenges, meet Buddhist background followers of Jesus, and engage in strategic prayer to change the spiritual map of the Buddhist world. This week, we're joined by Paul Kramer, a veteran cross-cultural worker and team leader in Northern Thailand. On today's episode, Paul talks about his testimony, call to missions, and heart for his Buddhist friends. He also shares how prayer has opened doors through healings, relationships, and being in the right place at the right time. Welcome to the Change the Map podcast. I'm your host, Josh, and this is a podcast for missionaries, pastors, missions leaders, and for people that just want to get more involved in the Great Commission. If this is your first time listening to or watching the podcast, we want to encourage you to like and subscribe if you're watching this on YouTube or subscribe to the audio version of the podcast, and that will just ensure that you hear and see all of the new content as it's posted. We've also got a Change the Map community at changethemap.net, and you can download the app as well, and that's an easy way to start getting involved and praying for the Buddhist world today. Well, today we've got uh, Paul Kramer with us, a veteran global worker here in Chiang Mai, Thailand, and he's going to share some stories with us. So, Paul, it's great to be here in Chiang Mai. It's good to have you here. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself for people that don't know you? Yes, um, my name is Paul Kramer, married to Robin. We're originally from Minnesota, and so we moved here 11 years ago, and we've been uh, serving here in in Chiang Mai mainly that long, and we have four children, six grandchildren. All of them are back in Minnesota. Awesome. Well, why don't you give us a little bit of the background of so, you know, some of your life story, sure. uh, a little bit of your testimony. We'd, we'd love to hear that. Sure. Uh, I grew up in Iowa and I in a Catholic family. And so it just never really connected well with me or, or just never uh, understood what was going on. Never had a Bible and didn't have the Bible stories or any of that type of stuff. And so I moved up to Minnesota for college, and just that's when I quit going to church. And so after uh, being in Minnesota, shortly after college, I got married. We uh, we had two daughters, married for a long time, gotten divorced. And so in 2002, I met Robin. Okay. And her situation was pretty much the same. However, she was in a a Christian home more that she connected with. She... uh, you know, went to church every week and did the Bible studies. And the, she was just more connected with her kids and everything. She has two boys, okay. uh, two girls. And so we just um, connected. And then, uh, but she was missing that point, you know, that little thing that's a big thing, the uh, personal relationships with yeah. with uh, God. That's what she was missing. So, well, we did the worldly thing, you know. We just decided, let's just move in together. That was in 2002, and our kids were all in high school at that point. So we just said, we're never going to get married again. It's just not something we feel we need to do. And so uh, 2007 comes around, and the last one of our kids, the youngest, goes off to college. And so we're celebrating. We're crying, yeah, yeah. crying with joy on that yeah, one. Kind yeah. of. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I asked Robin, I'm like, what do you think we should do now? You know, And she's like, let's go to the church. And not on my radar, you know, but yeah. uh, there just so happened to be Assemblies of God Church being built just right very close to our house. And so we went in there on a Sunday, and, I mean, it was eye-opener. We'd never seen anything like that. They had a band. There was raising hands. And, you know, it was just a different, but we were teary-eyed. Yeah. Which I'm probably going to get right now. <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. anyway, and so... Uh, but the, the pastor's message was just spot on on how to live life and everything. So um, shortly after, thereafter, less than a month, I think we both committed our lives to Christ. Wow. Yep. And so uh, wasn't too long after God started to kind of um, convict us. It's like, you're not living right. It's not a good example for your kids. So we flew off to uh, California, just eloped, came back married, you know, and and uh, and then uh, another month or two, there was a men's trip to Haiti. Okay. And so I didn't know what a mission trip was, but I yeah. went on that one, you know, and uh-huh. 
seven men. It was it was an eye opener that way. And I got baptized while I was in Haiti. Just came back, wow. changed on fire for that, you know, and explained it to Robin about these mission trips. So, a few months later, uh, the church was doing one to Uganda, okay. and so I didn't feel called to go on that one. She just went. It was a there was about eighteen, nineteen people, but she went along on that one, and she got baptized in the Holy Spirit while she was there, and so. Uh, we, we both came back from those things changed. And yeah. so we were just on fire and we're like, we got to do one of these together. You know, we yeah, can't yeah. be doing these separate. So we went to El Salvador for okay. our first trip together and, and just, you know, how mission trips are. If you go somewhere, they're just, your life gets changed. You see good, yeah. you see different things than, it, you know, you normally do. But uh, we come back and we're, so we, we went to our pastor at that point and we're like, I don't know what this is, man, but we just feel there's something more to this. And how could us, Robin and I, how could we become missionaries? We didn't even really know what it was, but I was teaching school at that time. She's an accountant. And he's like, well, there's a number of things you got to do. You need to like sell your house, sell all your stuff. Okay. We can make that happen. Get totally out of debt. I mean, four kids in college, we were hoping. (laughs) Let's do that. Yeah. And then study and become pastors. Mm -hmm. And so over the next number of years, we went on multiple missions trips and we were always praying you know god if this is it you need to show me yeah we went on multiple ones well finally in 2011 we came uh over here to thailand for a short-term trip and uh, the missionary that we came to visit and led us was actually mark mark doreen mark okay. and janey yeah, there yeah, yeah. yeah so we came in 2011 with them and and uh the moment we got over here you know, it's late. It's like 11 at night, and it's dark, and, and you've just flown, and uh, we are come out in the parking lot putting suitcases in trucks, and Robin just comes over all teary and goosebumps. It's like, do yeah. you feel this? I'm like, no. Hold, hold that thought. I <laughs> yeah. am not feeling yeah. this right now. I'm just now. feeling hot and <laughs> yeah, tired. 24 to 30 hours of flying. It's yeah. not, not feeling the Lord right at yeah. that time, you know. But anyway, during that trip, there was a number of things that just totally... Can, uh, convinced us that this is where we were supposed to be. So we went back and took care of everything it, you need to do, you know, get the partners and get rid of your final stuff. And we moved over here in uh, early 2012. Well, one of the things that I like about you, Paul, is is just how you make new friends. You know, you're just meeting people, people come to you and you're you know, you're, whether it's going to the market or, you know, I know you guys like ride bikes on Sabbath and, and do all mm-hmm. that kind of stuff. And, and I love that how you connect with some of these monks, right? So right, you've got right. different stories of monks that you've connected with. And I love that because I, I love spending time in temples, trying to, you know, meet, meet monks, hang out uh-huh. with monks, try to get an opportunity to pray with monks and stuff like that. And so I know you've got um, some stories about monks. And so I'd love to, to hear one of those, those stories. I think it would be really cool for our listeners to sure. hear. Sure. Sure. Uh, you know, I, I had prayed about, I want to meet a monk because mm-hmm. we, had, we had a conversation. Who's an influential person you like? And we had different people. I said, I'd just like to meet a monk, you know. And early on, I'm going back to a Sabbath. Early on, we learned you need to take a Sabbath, you know, because if you come over here and you uh, you got any cracks in you, you just need to, they're going to become big. You just need to uh, have a Sabbath and recharge or you're not going to last here very long. So mm-hmm. on my Sabbath... Uh, my first one, I'm like, I'm just going to go out and drive around on the motorbike. And I, I went to this market and I wanted to buy some bananas. I eat a lot of bananas. So <laughs> yeah. I go there and I'm walking. There's a monk standing out in the front and he's he's in his orange robe and everything. He's got a big bowl and he's just, you know, people come up and give offerings. And then he no, 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 chance over them. They, <laughs> yeah, that's they, a pretty good impression. I well, like <laughs> you'll learn why. I've been around that guy a lot. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, uh he, um, he, they do that, and then they believe they're, they're earning some, some uh, merit, you mm-hmm. know. And so he's doing that, and I walk by him, and I'm a little distance. I'm just like, ah, oh, sawadee cop. That's what we do here, you know, yeah. sawadee cop. And then he's like, uh, do you speak English? And I'm thinking, we had moved to a smaller town, and only the younger people. And this guy's like my age, you know, late 50s, and at that point, and... Uh, uh, I'm thinking, was that English or Thai? You know, I'm like, yeah, I speak. And yeah. so we spoke a little back and forth where I'm from and da, da, da. And then I knew he was kind of busy getting his people come and doing that stuff. So I'm like, hey, you got a phone? So he whips out his little orange clothing. Here's a, remember those little blue flip phones <laughs> yeah, that we yeah, got? Yeah. yeah. 
yeah, what's your number? So I take his phone number. And so the next week on my Sabbath, I call him up and uh, said, hey, can I come over and visit you at your temple? And so uh, I did that, went over there, walked around. And now it's getting to be about 8 o'clock in the morning. And um, I'm a real morning person. I'd already been up for quite a while. But my wife, Robin, she's not so much a, a morning person, you know. And, and on her Sabbath, she likes to stay at home and just kind of relax and pray and yeah. podcast and things. So yeah. uh, I, this monk, his name was Goong. Uh -huh. And so well, that's a I mean shrimp. It's yeah. a common name. I know yeah. a number of Goongs right now. So, <laughs> yeah. so uh, I, he's showing me around his temple and his room he stays in and everything. And then he's like, hey, can I go to your house? Which caught me off guard. I mean, yeah. we try to get our neighbors into our house, and they're very reluctant to get into your house. So yeah. I'm like, sure, you know. And so... We're walking through the temple, which was through a market. Then I then I remember my wife Robin. She's sitting at home, so I'm oh, and I, he goons beside me. So I get on the phone. I call Robin. And I'm like, hey, hey, Robin, I'm coming home. She's like, okay. I'm like, I got a monk with me. And she's like, now's not a good time. I'm like, <laughs> okay, five minutes, because I was committed, you know. Yeah, and so, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, yeah. And so got him on the back of the motorbike, went over there, and he actually came into our house. Which I'll tell you one more little bit about that. <laughs> yeah. So monks aren't supposed to really look women in the eyes or mm. do anything. And so Goong had an interest in tennis and he knew how to play tennis, you know? And so, uh, but we didn't play tennis, but I'm showing the room. And then he, he has, uh, sees our badminton rackets. So we're in the kitchen. He derobes basically till he's got like a little Tarzan. <laughs> yeah, suit on. yeah. Tattoos everywhere. And he's showing me how to play tennis yeah. And Robin comes in, Woo! you know, can't, yeah. can't see that. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, um, got to know Goon really well. And mm -hmm. so multiple times he would call me up and like he scuffed up his leg, you know, mm -hmm. and he said, oh, can I can you take me to the hospital? It's like 10 o'clock at night. So and he calls me. And so. Yeah. And normally I ride on the motorbike, which is which was a little interesting because monks and a lot of people with dresses sit side saddle mm -hmm. and he's on the back going side saddle <laughs> barely hanging on you know yeah, he's just sitting yeah. there i'm like if i dump him in the intersection <laughs> yeah I, I don't know it's gonna take a while to recover from that one yeah, yeah exactly but anyway uh then i i brought him back to the temple and i it was an opportunity he's sitting there and they like to be prayed for so i'm just like goon can i pray for your healing so i prayed and explained you know healing and all that and it didn't. The next morning, he calls me up. I'm looking crazy. He said, "Oh, I got a fever now." I said, <laughs> All right, we're going again. And yeah. he, he got healed on that one. But that's awesome. Uh, just one other story about Goon too. Then um, we spent for a couple years, almost every Saturday, I would meet with him, take him places, got to know him so well, learn about Buddhism, all that kind of stuff. And so we get back about five o'clock one of the nights, and um, he's like, "Oh, Paul, I got something for you." I'm like, "I'm in a hurry. It's date night." Because mm. Robin and I had. We go do our own thing for Sabbath, come back. We have a little date night dinner, go out somewhere. I'm like, Goong, you know, Robin, we're, we're going date night. Just a minute. And he comes and he's got this Buddhist statue. Mm -hmm. And it's common, but it's a big one, you know, a big special one to him. And he's like, for you. I'm like, I can't do it. And he's like, for you. I said, I'm a Christian. It's going to look so good. And, and I, I was feeling like I'm starting to offend him. I'm just, Goong, just because it's you, you know, and I took it. But as I'm walking through everything, going my motorbike, I just had this mm. heavy, dark feeling, you know? Yeah. So I put the, the statue under my, my seat and drove home. I almost threw it in the river. But the next morning, I, uh, I gathered it up, went back to his temple and said, Goong, I, I still want to be friends, you know, and, and, but we're Christian. It was just an opportunity. We don't, we don't uh, worship idols. And so he said, okay. And he took it and he goes back to his room and and he comes back with this pineapple, the biggest, best one ever. And I'm like, How about a pineapple? <laughs> yeah, like, like, yeah. I'll take your pineapple, you yeah, know. But, yeah, yeah. but over the years, I've still gotten to know him. He's, uh, he's not, he's a seeking. I mean, he knows a lot every single day. This morning, he sends me a Buddhist thing, and then I send him a uh, Christian thing. We just banter it back yeah, and forth. Yeah. And so, but That's cool. He's not, he's not a Christian yet. Yeah, yeah. well, we're going to be praying for Kung. I yeah. think there's a lot of stories like his, you know, we... We, yeah. we hear a lot of testimonies, and we thank God for, for those testimonies, but it's yeah. a good reminder that there's still a lot of work to be done. Right. You know, that there's right. still a lot of people that we need to be praying for and, and connecting mm -hmm. with. And I think that's an answer to prayer. You know, we pray that missionaries and global workers uh, would have these divine appointments with people where there mm -hmm. would be these right 
these people that we were at the right place at the right time, you know, you know, that you're at that market. If he wasn't there, I mean, how many yeah. countless hours, days that you've been able to spend with him because mm. of that one moment where you, you met him, you know? Right. And so we pray for those kind of divine appointments. We pray for people to come to missionaries. And so do you have any other stories like that of people that have come to you that you've connected with over the years? Sure. Yeah. In fact, I got another one that's, um, they always help in that market, you know, I go to a market on a Sunday morning. I I got just a short amount of time. I'm going in to buy some bananas and I come out and there's not a lot of people. (laughs) You got a lot of banana, a lot of market stories. You got a lot of banana stories. I spent a lot. Yeah. (laughs) And so I, I come out, and I'm just going to get the bananas, and I'm getting my seat up. And this older gentleman, probably mid, mid-70s, mid he comes up to me, and he straight out says, he says, hey, I'm a Buddhist man. Last night I had this dream about sin, and it's just I don't know what to think about it, you know? Do you know anything about what sin would be? Are, are wow. you, can you take me someplace? And Wow. So we sat down on <laughs> yeah. the bench for like an hour, went through different things and everything, and and uh, over time, I, like that, I got together with him many times. But the, the part that I, I didn't know is he knew quite a bit about the Bible, really. He has a memory. He knows the Bible better than anybody I know because we'll have conversations and I'll be saying something. He'll be like, no, that actually, that's, a, you know, Ezekiel 2 where I don't know, like, whoa. And yeah. so uh, he just has a lot of questions and he can't quite believe it. He's just with his mind and everything. Mm. So it's kind of gotten to the point too. Sometimes I'm, I've multiple times I've just said, his name is Siri Watt. And so I just like Siri Watt, it's, you're never going to figure it out. God, you can't figure out why he did this and that. And he just mm. has all these interests, not interest, all these things he says, <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah. that don't make sense, but to him they do. And it's, it's from your heart. You just got to accept, have faith. That's what faith is. And, uh, and become a Christian, or, and and uh, then you'll understand more, a lot yeah, more, as yeah. it, as God opens your eyes and changes your mind to that. Yeah. Mm. And this is this is another thing, you know. We've been praying for. We've been praying for people to have dreams. You know, we've seen this in the Muslim world. You know, right. a, lot, a lot of our podcasts. You know, we'll, we'll have people that have different stories about um, experiences they've had, and we're always saying, "Man, we want to." We want to see more dreams, more visions, yeah. more stuff like this. And the Lord's doing it. He's doing it here in Thailand. Mm-hmm. And so we want to keep praying um, and praying for these seekers right. um, that you've built these relationships with. Had you have, has anybody, you know, that you've been connected with over the years? I mean, these are kind of answer to prayers and these guys are kind of works in progress. Mm-hmm. Right? These are like prayers in progress until we see them come to faith. Uh, have you seen where the Lord has uh, kind of answered you know, right away, and you've seen somebody come to faith or anybody connected with you or your team or you, mm-hmm. here in Thailand, you know, that's that's going to build our faith to see, wow, God can do this this thing in a moment too. Some take years, but sometimes God does this thing in, in an instant. Sure, sure. You, you said that right. Some some just take moments. I've got stories about those, but I want to share one that took longer than yeah. that. And so when we first came here in 2012, we started studying Thai with a woman. We studied for about a year and a half and then lost contact with her and we studied a lot more Thai. We study a lot. We forget more than we <laughs> yeah, than we yeah. learn. But yeah, and so uh, when COVID came around, uh, we decided our our ministries had been shut down because of COVID, and so we're like, we should go back to studying some Thai. I'd really like to get the Christian words because we've always had Buddhist t- uh, teachers, and okay. there's a whole nother level of words in Christian, you know, Christianity that I'm not too good with, and so yeah. wanted to study more of that. So I ras- asked around. That we've got a few missionaries in our neighborhood, and I asked them, and they're like, "We got the perfect woman for you, you know." And so turns out it was the one that we had in 2000. Uh, 12. She really? was, you know, and so this is like 10 years later. Wow. And so uh, her name is Kru Pai. Mm-hmm. So Kru means teacher and Kru Pai. And so we started studying online with her, Zooming, you know, at that point. But then churches started opening up and we, you know, go in a little bit and then they'd be closed. But we connected her well with um, Pastor New, Watton New. New is a woman and, and she's at Liberty Church there. Mm. We connected her with Pastor New. And uh, she was able to start to disciple her, teach her how to pray, and all of this over Zoom and everything. So just uh, really connected well with, with Pastor New. She did a lot 
of uh, helping her. And so finally, uh, churches opened up and we decided, uh, you know, we're going to go to church and go back one day when I studied with her. Robin and I studied separately, but when I studied with Crew Pie, she told me that uh, what had happened the week before. And so um, that's getting confusing. <laughs> anyway, no, no, that's fine. Yeah. And so she had had a terrible pain, terrible pain in her side and back. And she went into the hospital and it was very terrible. And so I'm like, one to 10, how bad? 10. I thought I was wow. dying. I thought I was dying. And so she's on the table and there's a couple doctors looking over and trying to figure out what to do if they do surgery right now or everything. And so she, she shut her eyes and she started praying. She said, Pastor New taught me these prayers. I just prayed for healing. I just prayed for God. Just don't let me die in all of this. Mm -hmm. And so she opened her eyes and she saw the big lights, but she saw a gold cross between her. So mm -hmm. she shook it off and she shut her eyes and was like, no, did I really see that? You know? And yeah. She opened her eyes again. There's that gold cross. And right away, instantly, all the pain was gone. She wow. was healed, you know, instantly. Wow. And the doctors are still that. And she's like, I'm good now, you know. And they're like, we got to keep looking, you know. Did yeah. this happen to this? And they kept her another day. They couldn't figure out anything. But wow. she was even able to give her testimony to those doctors, right? It was my God who did that, you know. And wow. so um, we come to church to, uh, that first day when it opens up again. And uh, we go into church and crew, crew pie comes up to share her testimony, that one that I just shared mm -hmm. with you. Why she promised me, don't tell Robin. Mm -hmm. So I, you know, <laughs> she's yeah. good friends with Robin. Yeah. And, and so Robin was sitting there. She's like, what? You know, and she was so excited that that happened. Well, then afterwards, they were doing baptisms. And so uh, Cooper Pie had decided to do, to be baptized. And wow. so uh, Robin got to uh, help be the one to, to oh, baptize awesome. her. So it was just so cool that she had actually um, studied. This might go in. She yeah. she had uh, taught missionaries for years. Mm. She taught a lot of missionaries. So when I first went back and and started going back to to uh, learn from her, we asked her, um, or she said, "I'm about a seventy percent uh, Christian right now. I'm about seventy percent, uh -huh. you know." Yeah. And then one day, Robin was studying with her, and she said, "I got the list." Rob's like, "What list do you got?" She goes. This missionary gave me a list, six things I knew need to do for being the Christian, you know, and like, uh, <laughs> you know yeah. things like get rid of your idols yeah. and commit. And yeah. I've done four of them. So she she was on fire yeah. and, and got saved. Wow, yeah. that's awesome. Praise God. I love I love hearing stories like that. I, I wanted to see, are there things, you know, over this next month as we pray for the Buddhist world? You know, I feel like this theme that we have here is obviously relationships. I mean, almost every podcast, it's yeah. a lot of this stuff, these these miracles, these signs, these connections, these God moments that typically they're done in the context of these relationships, whether we just meet somebody or, mm -hmm. you know, but it comes through these relationships. How can we be praying for, for missionaries, for global workers? How can we be praying over the next month? I mean, like you said, we saw we saw some of these miracles happen over years. These seekers, mm -hmm. some people, it's you know a short time, a long time. How can we be praying for you guys? How can we be praying for people in Thailand um, as they go out, as they go to markets, as they do do this stuff? What are what are things that we can be praying for? I just think when you're going out on the streets, if you're wherever you're going, you need to be intentional and think about praying about. Hey, just show me something. I think they're out there. You know, a lot of times, if you're not asking for it, you're not receiving it, and yeah. so. I just think that's important when you go and, and you look and pray in advance. You know, it's, a, it's the prayer that sometimes open your eyes and open these opportunities. So just pray that people have these opportunities filled up with prayer. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd like to pray for monks, too. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of monks. Yeah. I got other stories. When I said that, you know, I, I sat right next to a monk for a long plane ride. The, the week or two after, I'd met Goong. And so... I just started meeting monks. I'm like, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a goon. I'm a monk magnet. So. I'm the same way, and I think I connected you with one of the guys. I mean, there's oh, a guy. Yeah. He, there's a guy here in, in Chiang Mai. It's like there was dozens and dozens of people, and this monk. He's. I've shown his picture to people all over Thailand, and mm. other monks know this guy. He's like a top guy, and this guy said, "Hey, come over here." You know, and we end up talking for 30, 40 minutes, and he gave us a tour of his whole the whole temple, and let me lay hands on him and pray for him. And this mm. is one of these top guys, right? You know, that's letting me as you know, right. guy just random guy praying for him, and 
And so, yeah, I, I love monks and I love being able yeah. to connect with these guys. You know, they, they're obviously seekers. Mm-hmm. You know, the fact that they're in temple, I mean, they're, they're like driven to right. know the truth and to do these things. And it's like, um, you know, Buddha just got there first, <laughs> you know, right. for some of these places. So, um, so yeah, that's awesome. Let's pray for monks. What else can yeah. we be praying for this month? Uh, you said relationships. So for us, as we have a lot of neighbors. We do our walks and we meet a lot of neighbors and they we share and we give them, uh, you know, f- treats and Christmas things. But uh, they're listening, they're seekers, some of them, they're different levels. But I think I'll, for friends and just acquaintances, and I think everybody has somebody that they want to be praying for that they've shared a little bit or a lot. And so just pray for, for the people we've had relationships with. Okay, yeah. awesome. And then you also shared a little bit about, you know, your story. We got to hear your family, you know, life and stuff. And I think um, there's a lot of missionaries are real people, mm-hmm. real families. You know, they, they leave different periods, ages and stages in life. How can we be praying for missionaries this month? I think uh, we could be praying for relatives, family, relatives. We, we all have, I believe, we all have somebody on the other side of the world or wherever, you know, yeah. back in the States usually. and that really uh, don't know the Lord. They're not going to church, and uh, but uh, just be praying for them. Pray that somebody there connects with them, meets with them, shares with them. We, I mean, sometimes we feel a little like that, a little guilty that we can't do it, but yeah, we want to yeah. uh, have your prayers. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, Paul, it's been an honor having you here with us, and I'd love to have you just pray for these things. I mean, I know these are all areas that are very close to your heart, these monks, these relationships, these family members. Um, if you could if you could lead us in praying sure. for open doors when we're out, yep. you know, being intentional, if you could pray for monks, if you could pray for relationships, then also praying for the, the family members of missionaries who have, you know, gone off to another country and, and have that um, stress and guilt and... You know, just like wondering, like, what's going to happen to so-and-so with me being way over here? I think that's something, like you said, we all deal with. So if you could go ahead and and pray, we'd appreciate it. (laughs) Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, Father God, we just thank you that we're able to be here. And um, we're we're here in Thailand right now, and we we just pray for... The uh, the monks there there's a huge amount of monks in in this country God and they they are seeking for something God we just pray that uh, open their eyes whether it's with us missionaries or other whoever comes in contact with them or you give them dreams and visions whatever God just uh, allow them to understand that your hope is what they really need God so we just yeah. we just lift up these monks that are like that real people and have. Uh, have a desire to to know something when I pray that it's a desire to know you, Lord. I just pray that, God. And uh, We have a lot of people that we've built relationships, whether it's neighbors or people at a store or people at the gas station that we've shared some or we've shared a lot, God, and, and just continue to give us um, that opportunity to uh, continue to... Um, have us be a light to them, God. Just let us be a light and an example. And, and a lot of times we just know that if uh, we act differently, they'll come up and say, why are you doing it like that? I just pray that uh, they'll understand that we'll be, we'll be able to share with them and they'll understand, Lord, that uh, it's you, God, that gives us a, the peace and the comfort to be here and be away from our family. So I just pray for for the relationships that we started, that uh, that they'll come to know you, God, as their Lord and Savior, God. And I just pray as we're we're going out, we're going to places that um, we'll we'll be able to to uh, be filled up with you, God, and just not go and and get a banana because it's a banana, or fill your car with gas or whatever, God. Let let us be intentional in what we're doing. Let uh, the Holy Spirit fill us up and give us the words and the prompting and the the boldness to go out and just share the gospel, share whatever. So a lot of times it's just a little thing. It's it's saying maybe Prajawi Pan, God bless you, and, and that that might uh, lighten their day or change your life. So I just pray for all of our relationships that we're able to have, God. And I lift up uh, family, family and friends, but family, we... We are over here on the other side of the world, God, and we we have family that uh, are not going to church, that don't know you. They're into the world. They're into their things, God, and I just pray that someone will, uh, or something, whatever it's going to change, you know, to uh, 
open their eyes, God. Someone will share something with them or they'll, they'll get a message in the mailbox or whatever it's going to be, God. I just, I just pray for our family, Lord, that they will all come to know you. I know it's your timing, God, but I just, I just pray that uh, this happens soon, God, that yeah. uh, they'll, they'll become churchgoers and then uh, understand the hope and why we're over here trying to share that with others that don't know you, Lord. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Thank you for listening to the Change the Map podcast. For more information, visit www.changethemap.net.